AI is coming for our jobs, no doubt about it, but it's coming for some jobs far quicker than others. So before you go and drop tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars on student debt, it's probably worth knowing which degrees are going to be useless, unwanted, and unemployable so you can avoid them. One day we might just reach the AI utopia where none of us are working and we're all fat, lazy, hedonistic babies like in Wally. But until then, you're still gonna need to earn a weekly paycheck. So in this video, we're gonna dive into seven of the worst degrees to pick in the AI era. Let's go. Quick disclaimer before we start breaking hearts and causing existential crises. I didn't just wake up and personally decide which degrees are now shit. I'm presenting to you data collected from studies done by McKinsey, Oxford, the WEF, and a bunch of others that will be cited throughout the video. Make sense? Cool. The first degree that's going to be largely garbage is accounting and bookkeeping, which has gone from one of the most secure and stable professions in the world to arguably one of the riskiest, but with a few caveats. Because it's not the high level, super knowledgeable, I got decades of experience accountants that are in any kind of risk. It's only you juniors just beginning to enter the workplace. And that's because every piece of the beginner accounting job, payroll, bookkeeping, invoicing, reconciliation, basic auditing, AI is already doing faster, better, and for far less money. Oxford researchers put bookkeeping and tax prep near the top of their most automatable jobs, with a 98% probability that it'll be fully automated. The World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs study puts accounting and bookkeeping as one of the fastest declining jobs in 2025 heading into 2030. So what does this mean? It means it's going to be relatively hard to get those entry-level accounting jobs in the near future because all of those repetitive, rule-based, boring tasks that junior accountants used to do are all being automated away by AI tools we're already using in the workplace today. QuickBooks has rolled out accounting agents that auto-categorize transactions without a human ever touching them. Vic AI is currently selling autonomous accounting that processes invoices with 99% accuracy. Botkeeper is literally replacing entire bookkeeping departments with their automated algorithms. At a bare minimum, accounting is going to look drastically, drastically different in the next five years. The second area of study that's going to waste in the AI era is graphic design and visual arts. For decades, we all thought the creative subjects would be the last to be automated, and yet some of the first consumer-facing AI products we were given by the overlords allowed us to generate any image we could possibly think of. The Future of Jobs report has graphic design as the 11th fastest declining job category in the world. Why? Because we've got tools like Adobe Firefly or Midjourney or even Google's Nano Banana that's now made everyone a designer. You no longer require specialized skills and a four year degree to remove a background or color grade a photo or design a logo. AI is already doing that in seconds. Canva conducted a massive study on the visual economy and found that 92% of business leaders expect regular employees, people in sales, HR, marketing, to have design skills and knowledge. So companies are no longer hiring junior designers to make a slide deck or a social media post. They're just getting their marketing guy to do it with Canva or ChatGPT or whatever other AI tool in a couple of minutes the entry-level work is disappearing. So unless you're already in the top echelon of designers, you're entering a field where the supply of good enough work is infinite and the price is crashing to zero. The third degree on the chopping block is the one everyone told you was the golden ticket, computer science. For the last decade or two, the advice was simple learn to code. If you did, you were guaranteed a six-figure salary, a ping-pong table in the office, and you'd work amongst a team of pretentious nerds who thought they were too cool to get changed out of their pajamas to come into the office. Well, that advice is now dog shit. A recent study conducted at Stanford shows that job listings and the hiring of entry-level software developers have dropped drastically. Take a look at the decline in the blue line on the graph, which represents entry-level jobs, and look at the orange line, the hiring of 26 to 30-year-olds both falling off a cliff. And the why is obvious. ChatGPT, Gemini, Cursor, GitHub Copilot have all completely destroyed the value of a junior developer. What do junior devs actually do? They write boilerplate code, they write unit tests, they debug simple errors. Well, guess what? Cursor does that instantly 
and for $20 a month instead of 120 k a year plus benefits and sick leave. We're seeing a massive shift where senior engineers armed with AI can now do the work of three, five, maybe even 10 engineers. Companies no longer need juniors to do the grunt work anymore. A recent survey from Stack Overflow and Deal found that 66% of enterprises are actively reducing entry-level hiring specifically because they're adopting AI tools. So why would you bother spending four years studying data structures and algorithms only to graduate into a market that pretty much considers you useless? The next useless degree on our list is anything to do with foreign languages and translations. For decades, learning a second language was the ultimate soft skill. If you could speak Mandarin or Spanish or Japanese, you were the bridge, the diplomat, the essential human link between cultures to help get business done. Well, that bridge just got replaced by a server farm somewhere in California. A massive study done by Microsoft's research team put interpreters and translators as the number one job most vulnerable to AI. They gave it a coverage score of 98%, meaning 98% of the tasks a professional translator does can now be done by AI. We've got tools like Samsung's AI Live Translate or Google Pixel phones that let you have a phone call with someone speaking a completely different language with the phone translating what's being said in real time. And other tools like HeyGen that take a video of you speaking English and instantly dub it into another language while rewriting your lip movements to match that new language. Cool as f***, not gonna lie. Not so cool if you thought that degree in languages and linguistics was going to land you a high paying job. Or any kind of job for that matter. Take Duolingo for example, the largest language company in the world made headlines recently for cutting a huge chunk of their translators. Why? Because they found AI could generate the lessons faster, cheaper and arguably better. So if the company whose entire mission is to teach humans languages doesn't even want to hire humans anymore, what chance do you have? Anyways, the next industry and degree that's going to get mogged by AI is paralegals and legal studies. If you've watched Suits, you probably think the legal profession is all about dramatic courtroom speeches and closing deals in high-rise corner offices. It's not. 90% of the job is reading thousands of boring documents, understanding them, summarizing them, and looking for typos. The kind of stuff AI does in seconds. In fact, a 2024 legal trends report by Clio showed that 69% of the hourly billable work performed by paralegals can now be automated by AI. We're talking things like document review, case filing, legal research, all the boring grunt work. And it gets worse. Goldman Sachs released a report estimating that 44% of all legal tasks in the US are exposed to automation, higher than almost any other industry in the world. Why? We've got tools like Harvey AI or CoCounsel that can read 500 pages worth of contracts in seconds and tell you exactly where the risks are. A human paralegal or lawyer would take a week to do that. The AI does it in 30 seconds. So here's the problem for you students. The legal industry has always worked on an apprenticeship model. You start out as a junior, you do the grunt work, you learn the ropes, and eventually you work your way up the ladder. But if AI does all the grunt work, how do you ever get your foot in the door? It's the same problem for the accountants and the software developers. The juniors with no experience are offering little to no value. So why would people hire them? Now, obviously hiring isn't going to zero, but it's definitely decreasing. Just like in our next field of study, journalism and creative writing. Now, if you're studying this because you want to be the next Ernest Hemingway, putting the human soul into words and great works of fiction for other people to enjoy, by all means, continue in your studies and Godspeed on your journey. But if you thought you might land a comfortable job at a publication company writing articles for readers on the internet, you're in trouble. You need to very quickly understand that the purpose of writing articles online has so little to do with readership and has so much more to do with Google search engine optimization. The majority of companies aren't writing articles to be read. They're writing articles to get clicks, validating their website regarding specific topics and therefore having Google organically rank them higher when those specific topics are searched by users. This has turned writing on the internet into a game of quantity and nobody does quantity like AI. Jasper AI. 
Copy AI or even just ChatGPT can pump out 50 SEO optimized articles in the time it takes you to write a single headline. And as always, we're already seeing people take advantage. CNET got caught publishing fake articles written entirely by AI. Sports Illustrated even went so far as to generate fake headshots for their fake authors. And the job cuts are already happening. We saw at least 8,000 journalists lose their job in 2023, another 4,000 in 2024, and it's not getting any better. A Bain & Co study cited in this report found that more than 80% of consumers now rely on AI-generated summaries without ever clicking through to the source article. If nobody clicks on articles, the ad revenue goes to zero, and when ad revenue goes to zero, journalists get fired. And finally, we arrive at the most popular degree in the world. The degree you pick when your parents tell you to go to college but you have no idea what you actually want to do. Business administration. For decades, this was the safety net. You get the degree, you get a mid-level job in a cubicle sending emails, managing schedules, and doing your part to keep the machine well-oiled. Well, now it's dog shit. The Goldman Sachs report has office and administrative support as the single most exposed industry to AI automation, with 46% of all tasks in the field able to be automated right now. And if you think that's just a prediction, look at what some of the biggest companies in the world are already doing. IBM recently made headlines when their CEO announced they're pausing the hiring of back office roles, things like HR and admin, and he explicitly said he expects 30% of those jobs to be replaced by AI within five years. That's around 7,800 people at just one company who aren't getting hired anymore. And the WEF backs this up. They predict that 26 million admin and record keeping jobs will be eliminated globally by 2027. 26 million. What's driving this shift? Agentic AI. We're now moving past chatbots that just talk to you, and we're entering the era of AI agents that can actually do things. Microsoft 365 Copilot can already join your meetings, take the minutes, assign tasks to the team, and schedule the follow-up call without a human lifting a finger. Or take a look at 11X AI. They've built an AI employee named Alice who handles sales and marketing. She finds the leads, researches their LinkedIn profiles, writes the personalized emails, handles the objections, books the meetings, and works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. She speaks 30 languages and she never asks for a commission. You and your little business admin degree ain't surviving this era, boy. That's all for this video though. Hopefully I didn't scare you too much. Gonna be posting way more career-related content as we near the launch of Career Compass. It's gonna be the ultimate career guidance and orientation platform with a bunch of tools and features that help you not only find a career that suits you and your psychological profile, but then helps you execute upon that planned career path. If you'd like to sign up for early access, click the link in the description. As always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.